the top 10 Christmas villains. Welcome to Kingdom of the Logos, a Christian program of critical thinking and adventure. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor. And I'm Pastor Amanda Sparrow. And I'm Anthony Alegria. In this video, we're going to do a list of the top 10 Christmas villains. And we're going to do this with hot, not or sanctified. And if we say something is hot, that means we like it. If we say not, it means we don't like it. And if we say sanctified, we're saying only God can decide. Now, we can only use the term sanctified once. And in this video, please send us your thoughts, questions, and comments. We've got a list. Anthony, if you will start with the list and tell us where the list came from and how many we're going to be looking at. It is 10, not 15. Yes? Yeah, it's 10. All right. And cool. the list comes from Kids World, which is kind of funny because there are some, you know, uh, movies for older generations and adults on this. So it's kind of hilarious. But it is from Kids World, and there are 10. So are you guys ready to begin? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Starting with number 10, Scott Farkas from A Christmas Story. All right. Now, A Christmas Story, every year we've got to watch this movie. I love it. I love it so much. Um, it really does capture being a kid, wanting things in Christmas, just the whole Christmas culture as a kid. Um, I don't see how he's number 10. He should be higher on the list. He's the bully. <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie, he's the bully. Ralph beats him up eventually. Should be higher. I'm saying not. 10 is too low for him. He should be a top five Christmas movie villain, so not. Not high enough. Um, and I have never seen that movie in its entirety. I've seen clips and things like that, and I know some of the references, but I've not actually sat down and watched the movie. However, I am familiar enough with it, and in thinking, I can't imagine... Like, if I count all the villains in Christmas stories, I know, I feel like that's only, like, four or five. So I feel like he, yeah, even though I've never seen the movie, in popularity alone, he probably should be higher on the list. It's a good movie. <laughs> all right, what we got next, Anthony? Not a good start list. <laughs> Number nine. Hans Grubber from Die Hard. Ah. <laughs> uh, now, see, this is another thing. There's a lot of people who debate. They say, is Die Hard a Christmas movie, or is it just a movie that's in sort of the Christmas circumstance? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go with the fact that it is a Christmas movie, and I'll say, yeah, I can see him being number nine on the list of, of Christmas villains. If, if Die Hard is, in fact, going to be classified in the Christmas movie category, um, yeah. There yeah. Are yeah, I agree. Um, I, I would put it as a kind of a Christmas movie. It's not very Christmassy in the sense of, like, you don't have Jesus or Santa Claus in it. But um, it, it's more than just situated in Christmas. I think there's definitely some some good themes of perseverance and family in there that make a good end. Hans Gruber is a fantastic villain. Um, so, yeah, he definitely belongs on the list, I think. Yeah, I, I think it is definitely it's a good villain. All right. <laughs> All right. The list is making a little comeback. It is making a comeback. <laughs> though, Farkas should have been higher. Just, oh. <laughs> Number eight. Marvin Harry from Home Alone. Oh, yeah, okay. So now, okay. yeah, that's another one. Yeah, that's a great series. I wouldn't normally think of Home Alone as being a Christmas movie, though it totally is. Um, yeah, great classic. The little traps and things that go in there. Sort of a weird style of comedy. I can see that being number. This is eight. Yep, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, and I think it could be on there as long as none of the other Home Alones are on the list. Now, yeah. that is a really good point, Pastor Amanda. <laughs> if the others are on the list, then I'm going to be like, mm, This is not good, which not I good. doubt it, because they were both the second and third one were fairly um, lesser known. Um, so I would imagine this is the only Home Alone on the list. But it is, it's good where it is if, if yeah. Yeah, so. I can see that. So, number seven. Uh-huh. Bumble from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, but Bumble's really not... A villain, or maybe he is in the first one. I can't remember. There's a second one that was uh, Rudolph and the um, Island of Misfit Toys was one that we watched more than even the original one growing up. But Bumble ends up, like, being their friend. He's really not a villain. He's just kind of, like, a scary monster. Kind of like a Hufflepuff from... Not a Hufflepuff. Uh, um, what's Hufflepuff. <laughs> no, uh, what is it off of uh, Winnie the Pooh, uh, the elephants? Oh, uh. Anyways, like, they're just kind of more, like, monster-ish than they are really villains. So I would say not. And I'm going to say not, too, because I feel like with the Rankin-Bass films, um, and with, with, with a lot of Christmas movies, um, you see a lot of, of, and you were talking about Island of the Misfit Toys, I feel like a lot of times they kind of shoehorn a villain just because they're like, this, they is, need something, this yeah. is the the style that a story needs to follow. So I'm going to say not to that one. And I definitely don't think it's higher than any that we've talked about. No, it's not higher than Farkas. He's like the classic bully. No way he's higher than that. No. You're going to get on that one like we did with Hark the Herald Angels. Y yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> this list is already doomed to fail. Farkas should have been a top five. Maybe even 
We'll see. We'll see. So, yeah. So, number six. And you guys might not recognize this from the name, so I'm going to describe him a little bit. Okay. But the angry elf from the movie Elf. Oh, well, I, I know which one the angry elf is. <laughs> yeah, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Yes. Or that's the actor's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, again, yeah, I think kind of like what you were saying with the other movies, he's really not a villain. I mean, he's definitely kind of an antagonist force, but I wouldn't so put him in, in the position as a villain. Though Elf is a great Christmas movie. I'm just going to go with not. I'm going to go not. Not top ten. Not top ten, ten at all. I would agree with y'all for the fact that he's not a true villain within the movie. But this is a pretty hilarious, almost kind of throwback, I guess, or reference just because <laughs> it's totally unexpected. Whenever right. I've seen this one, well, I almost start. What laughing. number did this come in at? Number six. Number six. six. There, see, there are six better Christmas movies that have an antagonist in it than, yeah, than, a true villain. than Elf. Like some just classic things out there. All right. What's number five? Now we get in the top five. Number five is Gremlins from the movie Gremlins. Oh, what? Okay, now we're getting to weird things. This is weird, too, because Gremlins occupies a weird place, too. People can't decide, is it supposed to be scary? Is it supposed to be funny? Is it just an adventure? It's one of those movies where you're going to have a different reaction to it at every stage in life. (laughs) Like, it's scary to, like, a small child... Then it kind of gets comical. There's kind of an era where it's sort of you're edgy if you're allowed to watch Gremlins or maybe you do it secretly. And then there's like you kind of become an adult and you're like, yeah, this is kind of funny. And then you turn into a prude again and you're like, no. And I mean, I'm kind of at like the prude again stage. So I don't know. I'm going to say not because there's definitely better movies than that. I, I actually kind of like Gremlins. But, yeah, I think there's better. Yeah, and like I can even see um, like Die Hard to me makes sense kind of as like – a older version of a Christmas movie. Not older, but, like, for adults, like, that don't want to sit down and watch one more sappy Christmas movie. It makes a great Christmas movie. But Gremlins isn't quite, like, it's not that kind of level, so it's not quite diehard level, but it's definitely more serious than, you know, say, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So it's just weird. So I don't, I can't just, it doesn't make sense to me even as a Christmas yeah, this, movie. So. this should not be on the list at all I'm in gonna my go with estimation. Not. It's a, I mean, seen... I'm sure it's a good movie. I just... <laughs> I, I like it, but not in top ten Christmas movies. I've seen The Gremlins too many times. <laughs> so and where I would say you that with one? all the love in my heart that I can because I loved them. But I have seen it too much. So would you agree with the list or would you feel like? Uh, I don't, They're barely even Christmas movies, honestly. <laughs> they're way more just about the situation of Gremlin than they are about Christmas. So yeah. for that reason, I might exclude them. Oh, okay. I, I would have excluded it from this list. Number four, and this one I think is de- is at least going to make meets Dylan's classical standards. <laughs> Old Man Potter, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. See, yes. I I would have probably Farkas and Old Man Potter. I probably have Old Man Potter at number one actually. And I know there's going to be some some um, more fundamental people out there who's going to be no seat of the devil is the number one <laughs> christmas feeling satan's I, the only yeah i, I get that um <laughs> but also if, like as far as christmas is concerned i would probably put mr potter at number one and probably farkas at number two mm. I, I think he's good with number four because really he's just a modernization of a classic christmas villain that i think will be number one so i think he's good i'll say hot he's good where he is Making predictions already? Yeah, we haven't gotten to Scrooge <laughs> or the Grinch yet, have we? No. All right, and this one, I, this monster or whatever villain is particularly detestable. So I'm happy that it made the list. But here we go. So number three, Mr. Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, see, is this a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Both, all the above. Yeah, this this list it, it needs to have. A, Movies that are more cut and dry Christmas, Christmas films. Yeah. Like, they haven't done much with the Rankin Bass films. No. Well, but there aren't a lot of, I think, villains in those movies, what I'm trying to remember. Like, Rudolph, I don't think, it mentioned Bumble, but I don't think it's really a villain. And you like, don't, Jack Frost, I don't think, has a villain. Well, there's the, the I think, is Jack Frost the one with the Burgermeister Meister Burger? I can't remember, but there's one where you've got, like, the evil villain in the castle and he's people are having to cut up icicles. I think that is Jack Frost oh, to have money okay, then, yeah, because he hoards be up all the money. Yeah, and, and the yeah, only right. money they have is like a kaputnik, which is one one hundredth of a penny. And this guy is so brutal; he doesn't even let people have like a hundredth of a penny, and they can't even do anything with that. That would be totally he useless. Yeah, he should be in the list. <laughs> and he should be in the list. I have totally forgotten what we're talking about. Who's yeah. the villain? Who's number three? Um, 
Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, yeah, Oogie Boogie. Yeah. Again, probably a great villain in a great m- movie, but maybe not in the top three. So not. I would put that at probably eight or nine. So I'm going to say not way too high, way yeah. too high. Yeah, I agree with y'all. He definitely doesn't need to be number three, but he's so disgusting. Yeah. Oh, no, he's he a has great to villain. be on the list. Yeah. He's, and he's, he's, he's probably a brain. stronger villain some, than some of the other ones that were on this list. Like he, he's like a yeah. true villainous character versus just kind of a mean person. So. Yeah. His song was really weird too. But anyways. Well, that so. whole movie was weird, but that's what made it good. <laughs> Heat Miser should have probably been three. Just because. Heat Miser and Cold Miser. And, and maybe Burger Meister, Meister Burger. They, they all could occupy like a number three. We spot. can already tell which villains Dylan's going to be partial to just based on the thumbnail that he made. They're right. too particular. And he well, brought up both of them. Well, they haven't appeared in this list so far. Well, well Farkas, Farkas has. Farkas, Farkas has. has yeah. But yeah. But he's like, number 10 doesn't even count. <laughs> number 10 is too low. Too low. Way yeah. too All right. All right. Number so, two. Number two. Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. I really feel like he needs to be number one. It, well, one for like time reasons. He has existed as the archetype of a Christmas villain long before any of these other ones. Well, in um, fact, so. he's an archetype for more than just Christmas villains. You see him even referenced beyond Christmas. Yeah. So I, I definitely, yeah, I could see him being number two. But I, I, I would, I'm going to say hot to him as number two, but I'm really going to say not to this list because they could have done better. better. And I, I think better. what makes him also a great character is I think he's truly villainous. I think yeah. he's definitely a villain until he reaches that point of redemption. And, and that's, I think, something important to, to consider, even as we were talking in our other podcast about the naughty and nice list, is um, we are not destined to remain either one or the other, that we do have free will and can choose, and that's what makes the story of Christmas Carol such... Uh, the best in, in uh, Christmas story, other than, of course, the original Christmas story. But the original, the original Christmas, Christmas story. story. But okay, what's number one? I will say before we get into one, number one, I just want to say that Amanda, what you said has got me thinking on something interesting. Should it be part of the form of the best villain that they eventually become redeemed, no matter how evil? I think that's actually an interesting topic to think about, considering like stories and plots and stuff like that. So that's cool, but. Number one is the Grinch the from Grinch. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I knew it was coming. See, they yeah. didn't even have some of these good Rankin Bass villains on here. <laughs> the Grinch, I can see him being number one. I'll I'll say hot to that, but with a lot of angry salt <laughs> um, mixed in there. This is not a sweet victory. Um, <laughs> it's a sour victory. It's a very sour, sour victory. Because everyone else didn't go come in yeah. second or third. Um, again, like I think Scrooge should be number one with the Grinch as number two. Agreed. And and also even though, though said hot. <laughs> yeah, it's not even said hot. Um, but the Grinch also again makes an, an interesting villain um, in the sense that there is that room for redemption. Um, and I think it's funny, like something we see in a trend in a lot of our modern movies is they, in an attempt to make more complicated and complex characters, they often. And I think a good, a well written villain is multifaceted. They're not just kind of just the person in the black cowboy hat and that's it they have to be um complicated and well-rounded however like they try to almost excuse away some of their villainous behavior and what's fascinating both about scrooge and the grinch is no one tries to like explain away or at least in their original context in some of the modern movies they might but they don't try to really explain away even though you're given context to their behavior it's just like they're bad people legitimately bad people who do legitimately bad things but even then there's this room for redemption so but anyways i would just switch this to and i'd be happy I can't see it going either way, hence why I said hot. I think it's fine having Scrooge, but Scrooge and Grinch probably need to be number one and two. Um, and then you just want your Christmas I want story the, person uh, yeah, as number three. Farkas needs to be like <laughs> three or four, and um, we'll have Burger Meister Meister Burger at three. We'll I put totally forgot Farkas about, at, yeah. at, um, We'll put Farkas at four. I would be happy with that. Mr. Potter at like five. I know I said he should be harder, but I could see him being like five. And I could have lived with a list like that. But this list, it let me down. I'm saying not to this whole list. It tried to, I think, add in too many like controversial Christmas movies. It was trying to be edgy. It did want to be edgy. All right. Don't be edgy. Christmas list. be you. (laughs) Yeah. I will say this is a good moment to talk about which one is truly more evil in himself, though. The Grinch or Scrooge. And... You've kind of heard Amanda's argument. My <laughs> argument is this. The Grinch doesn't just affect like a couple people and he's not just like a harsh, ruthless businessman who's mean on Christmas and all these other things. 
The Grinch is actively going out to people he don't even know. He don't. He doesn't have to know these people. He doesn't care. <laughs> Random people stealing from everybody in one night. So for like, those in the audience, Amanda and Anthony had this debate earlier today. <laughs> Before we do the program, we, we generally go to Dairy Queen. Um, and they had this debate of who is worse, the Grinch or Scrooge. Scrooge, and who hates people versus who hates things more. And there was sort of this back and forth. <laughs> I don't even know what position people were taking. I was just there for the, for the ride, and it turned out to be what it turned out to be. Yes. Well, you've heard most of my thoughts. I think the Grinch, the Grinch could be equally, if not more evil than Scrooge, just because he's not just, like, focused on his business and stuff like that. The Grinch is actively going out to make other people's lives. You don't even have to know him worse no connection man do you have any rebuttal uh i, I think scrooge is, is more evil and the only reason i would argue that is um the grinch is evil for kind of one day and really one action he other than that he's just kind of a, a lonely old person that's a hermit he's um, a grinch yeah he's, he's just a grinch <laughs> versus scrooge kind of made a lifestyle of not just hating uh christmas but hating people and always thinking about himself first and foremost and so I think he, and again, he's the archetype uh, for a Christmas villain. Um, he, he existed long before the Grinch did. Well, the Grinch steals things, but the uh, Scrooge does make, make people do things they don't want to do, like make you go to work on Christmas. He does, he doesn't just take things from other people, he forces them. Oh, and there's some wonderful behavior. lines in, in uh, Christmas Carol where it talks about where, where uh, Scrooge doesn't want to give to the poor because... You know, he talks about there are prisons, there are poor houses, there's all these places where, where people should go so we don't have to care for people because somebody else will take care of them. And then when he is confronted by the ghosts of, of Christmas present, and he says, look, do you not even know who these people are? They're, you know, the people who, who live down the street from you. They're the people uh, that you come face to face with. That the responsibility is not somebody somewhere, but it is you. Um, and so, yes, I think Scrooge makes this great villain because I think we see a lot of ourselves in him versus the Grinch uh, is a little too cartoony maybe sometimes to learn the lesson. Well, we will let you decide for yourself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Please like our, our channel, like our videos on Facebook. Um, again, you can donate to the program if you want to hear more Christian content. I know this one was more of a list, but we do actually do a lot of good Bible study and things of that nature. You can donate at patreon.com slash kingdom of the logos. We greatly appreciate that. But it is a free program. Please download our podcast, take it with you, SoundCloud, iTunes, a lot of different places. We got to build up that YouTube channel. It's really small at the current moment, but come join us. With that, God love you and have a blessed day.